Hello, everyone. Um, so, uh, my estimate for this is very high, and um, I'm going to well do a bit of an interaction as far as this game go goes. So, this is System Shock from 2023. It's a faithful remake of an uh, original 1994 game um, to a point where you customize your own difficulty. Um, so, we pretty much go with a difficulty called 1111, uh, which is, well, for the most part, it doesn't, like these two elements at the end, cyberspace and puzzles, pretty much don't matter. And what matters is mission difficulty and combat difficulty. Combat, obviously, because it scales, uh, well, the amount of enemies and uh, how much damage we receive. And mission difficulty be because, because it affects how um, the reconstruction base work in the game which are kind of like the, the Vita Chambers from Bioshock, if you've played Bioshock. So uh, this is where we're going to start the run. So time's coming up. Well, time is in one, two, well, three, two, one. Then <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right. So this element was added in the remake. Originally, there would be a cut in here. I'm just going to press a bunch of things in here, uh, these buttons. I'm not doing this just for fun. It actually makes this brute forcing passwords faster. And now I have to sit and watch this first person cutscene. So a uh, quick introduction to the story. We're playing as a nameless hacker. We're hacking into Trioptimum Corporation, which is a mega corporation. Uh, and we steal some uh, cyber implant schematics from Trioptimum Corporation. The corporation instantly figures this, this one out. They send their goons to kidnap us, and they bring us in front of Edward Diego, who is one of the executives in the company, and a VP of, um, of a um, Citadel station, which is on the orbit of Saturn. Uh, he offers us a deal. If we hack in into Shodan, remove her ethical restraints, he's going to uh, make the charges against us go away, and he's going to uh, offer us an implant that we were going to steal. So we agree, we do that, and well, it turns out to be a big mistake. And that was an intro segment. Now it's six months later, and we wake up on Citadel Station. I'm quick saving, quick loading, because this skips an animation in here. And I'm going to pick up a first item, which is a med patch, and open this, pick up a, this pipe, switch to med patch, because it skips an animation for picking it up picking the pipe up and pick up also this one cyber implant which is required going to do a heavy attack pick up a berserk in here then a light attack heavy attack on this type in the code 451 and finish this bot off again one heavy attack open this and a light attack so uh, this is a uh, medical bay, or, well, medical deck of Citadel Station. Uh, it's, uh, the Citadel Station has 10 decks. Um, and I guess it would be nice first to mention that uh, the original System Shock, as far as I know, is the game that introduced the 451 as an easter egg. Well. It wasn't an Easter egg back then, but it be has become since then an Easter egg and pretty much an iconic thing for all immersive sims. And System Shock is kind of considered as a grandfather to all immersive sims, which is also why I really wanted to bring this to ESA. So, uh, coming up, first clip of the game. Uh, I'm just going to crouch in here and then quick save, quick load, and that should push me out of bounds. Okay. Um, uh, okay, and then I have to navigate blindly. There is, uh, well, not fully blindly because I can use a minimap on on the left part of the screen. Uh, gonna quick save, quick load to load this area. So uh, this is a pretty massive skip. I have to destroy uh, the CPU nodes. Uh, each deck uh, pretty much has uh, four CPU nodes at least. Well, actually, no, because I think engineering has two. Either way, I have to destroy those uh, because this unlocks the elevator to the next deck, which is research. And now I have to go inbounds. And to go inbounds, I'm going to go in here, quick save, quick load, switch to fragmentation grenade. 
uh, cook it, so called, and then I'm going to clip my head inside in bounds. Not yet. Oh no! Let's try this again. Uh, so try this again. Clip my head in here, please. A bit further. That should work. There we go. And then blow myself up. So, as I said, these uh, reconstruction bays work in an identical way to Vita Chambers, as in, if you die, you respawn at one of those, assuming you have one of those activated. There is a few exceptions to those. One is uh, Beta Grove on Executive Deck, uh, and then later on, once you blow up the station, um, then obviously all of them are also disabled. And it's also a reason why we're playing on the mission difficulty uh, one because it changes how uh, these work normally if you were to play on mission difficulty two or three uh, if you died and you hadn't you didn't have the um, one of those uh, reconstruction base activated on the deck it would be game over but on dif mission difficulty one if you die you just respawn on the nearest one which uh, we're going to be using soon hopefully uh, so i'm going to run in here and i am running out of stamina there is no stamina indicator for me now and uh, it's possible to get one because it's also an implant that you're supposed to pick up um but um yeah but it would be slow so so i'm not doing that so uh i'm going to uh alpha quadrant or them overheated weapon that's bad uh so spark beam is an energy weapon it and i have to be careful not to overheat it um okay there is a keycard that I really want to pick up, and then a bunch of grenades. Uh, please don't. I'm very low on health. In part, intentionally. So I'm going to go in here. There is a teleporter in here. Uh, there is a few fragmentation grenades again, and a pistol. Uh, I'm going to be careful on this uh, ladder not to die. So I'm going to open this door. There is a keycard in here, and then... Oh, and then I have to throw a grenade and it should blow me up. Hopefully I activated the, the reconstruction bay on this deck and haven't forgotten uh, with all my talking. Uh, so yeah, um, that should respawn me in the middle of the deck. Yes, okay. And now I'm going to go to the uh, beta sector of this deck uh, where um, there is a bit of a radiation leak. Um, caused by Shodan, uh, essentially at this point in the game, and don't worry if I spoil it too much, because that's not exactly the point of System Shock. The point of System Shock is figuring out more of all of the side stories uh, that are happening to all of the characters and all of the lore, and also kind of being lost, in a, because the, this game is very good at uh, getting you lost. So I'm picking up an X-22 Isotope, uh, at this point, uh, Shodan has a mining laser repurposed and targeting Earth. Um, so, um, we're being sent essentially to um, destroy this laser. Um, and to, destro to destroy this laser, I have to activate shields on the reactor level and uh, disable safety override, well, enable safety overrides, overrides. okay. Uh, switch this to override uh, mode, destroy this sentry, wait a moment for this to cool down, another shot. And there is a bot that uh, really likes to blow you up in here, there we go. So I'm going to put the, the isotope in here. And then I'm going to run through the middle of the reactor, which is obviously not very healthy for you. Um, it has um, a fairly high um, radiation level, which is going to be slowly killing me. Hopefully it's going to be fine. I have to throw, throw an EMP in here because this bot otherwise is going to kill me. Uh, not good. 
Can this graft shaft work? Okay, <laughs> nice. I threw this way too far. Okay, this is not going very well. Uh, I honestly had no idea that the EMP grenades can um, disable graph shafts as well, so that's nice. Code in here is 199. Uh, going to throw another grenade, switch this, and then explode. This is going to respawn me on a, back on the research deck, uh, and I'm going to have to run to Central Command, which is right near um, the bio, well, the reconstruction bay. And then I'll just fire a laser. And also I'm going to drop this pipe uh, because I'm, I don't need it anymore. Uh, in here there is a few more mutants and balls that suck out energy. Um, a very weird um, enemy design, honestly. Okay, so fire this. Uh, you really don't want to be firing this unless you have enabled shields. Uh, because the game allows you to, it's just, it's going to be game over if you do that. And Shodan is going to kindly thank you for uh, doing her job for, well, yeah, essentially, right? Because you just fired the laser that she was planning to use, but she couldn't. Okay, so I'm going to maintenance now, and going to recharge some energy. Uh, maintenance is... Uh, place where uh, security level on the deck matters so essentially destroying cameras lowers security level some areas are not accessible uh, unless the security level is low enough so i have to lower security level uh, to a point where medbay is, ac uh, is accessible for me and here i'm going to be picking up a laser rapier Thank you for missing that. Uh, also going to switch to stamina up um, patch and just going to apply it because I'm going to be running a lot now. Uh, so one shot, another one and another one in here. There we go. Uh, <coughs> open this one up. There we go. And now I'm going to the cargo elevator in the middle of this deck and I'm going to be going to flight deck. Uh, Flight deck uh, has a very important item. Technically, it's, it has two items. It's one of the places where you can find uh, turbo boots, but um, uh, also this jump is a bit hard, so it may, might take me a few tries. So turbo boots, there are like two of them on this deck. Uh, one of them are, is level one. The other one is level 2. I'm obviously going straight away for level 2 turbo boots that I'm going to need. <laughs> uh, here is a little puzzle. I just solve it by uh, extending parts of the bridge. I uh, love this bot as well. So this corridor has a few um, cyber assassins. Um, Zeta, if you have something, um, you can read one. Absolutely. We have a $75 donation from Happy Camper saying GG's to all the chill runs at Stream 2. Let's make it a nice last day. Uh, and that also went towards the uh, incentive to kill Diego and Reaver with the uh, Cyber Rapier. Thank you very much, Happy Camper. Uh, okay, so I'm picking up Turbo Boots and uh, First Aid Kit and now I'm going to be respawning back on maintenance level. Uh, this is where you're going to see first use of so-called time travel glitch. The time travel glitch is, glitch is actually very confusing, um, especially if you combine it multiple times with uh, saves that, are, that were created before or after uh, as far as in-game time goes and events in the game goes. Uh, what it allows me to do is... Um, it, if there is a, a lever or a switch that has a first-person animation, it allows me to run this animation and then have it interrupted by loading a save file at a specific moment, which is why I have to create a save file in here. Uh, but uh, having the animation, let's just say, to, to make it simple, but it's not quite that, but uh having the animation finish right after i load the save file meaning 
even though um, there is there might be a lever really late in the game if I have started an animation loaded a save file right at the beginning of the game that state is going to transfer to the er really early on as a save file created really early on also I have to clip my head in here and uh, replace one of the um, interface the modulators yeah there we go so a specific moment in animation and then I'm going to load this save file um, time travel glitch is actually one of the reasons why I was already worried about submitting it because it, this one is actually really uh, easy not to miss but the ones on executive deck uh, in the groves are much harder um, so we'll see how it goes here I'm going to just override this save file um, and I'm going to proceed to alpha grove so um, <clears throat> story wise Shodan um, since we've destroyed the laser Shodan also has some other ideas on how to solve the issues of humans living on earth uh, essentially her uh, idea is to create a super virus um, and eject a pod that is going to land on earth and everyone is going to mutate so uh, alpha grove is the hardest of all of the groves as far as speedrunning goes because it requires some very precise movement well maybe i'm overestimating it it's not that precise okay so i have to clip out of here go in here save load so i have some visual clues and then do a full sprint with a jump and land out of bounds on the collision that it's not visible for me uh, that's too low oh yeah uh, that's why i need a full sprint in here um not sure if this is um enough of a velocity we'll see also, Diego will just want to shut up in here. He's going to be repeating the same line multiple times. Um, okay, we say quick load. That should load this area now. I'm going to go in here. I create a backup safe in case I mess it up. And then clip my head. Uh, that's not looking good. I'm just going to load this. So I'm creating this backup because... Uh, oh, nice. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, that looks way better. Um, and then I'm going to load the, the save file in the middle of the executive deck. Uh, so again, that was a time travel glitch. Um, hopefully the state of that button transitioned to this save file now. Um, and I'm going to be uh, repeating that uh, two more times. And then one more time is going to be even more confusing because it's going to be just jumping between save files. So I'm going now to uh, Delta Grove. Um, after that, Del Delta Grove is actually pretty easy. It has a very nice chess puzzle in the middle, which I yesterday uh, managed to figure out while, while, once I was lying in bed. Um, you can actually solve it in two moves. Um, and I kind of solved it accidentally. I'm not good at chess. So here, it's just a jump. Jump in here and do a backup quick save. Fly in here and do a backup save file in case I mess up time travel glitch. Uh -huh. And then pull on this one and return to the middle of uh, executive deck again. So uh, Zeta, that would be a good moment to close the donation incentive. Yes, and we actually did get a 175 Ooh. anonymous, uh, do, sorry, 175 dollar anonymous donation there, which did push push the incentive to uh, being met. So nice. Yes, thank you so much for that donation. Yeah, because that that means I have to now adjust the route a bit, <clears throat> but that also means that. Uh, the rapier that we're going to be using uh, is going to be a very special one uh, which is going to have a hard color that we have selected in here um, so i'm flying in here towards beta grove which is in here uh, i'm using minimap obviously and there is this spot quick save quick load so it loads 
Um, <coughs> so, uh, I'm using a keycard to get inbounds. There is some other uh, way more risky ways of getting inbounds. Here I'm just going to create additional save file and instantly load it. It turns out that if you're touching the door to Beta Grove, even though it's locked, uh, it just opens on its own uh, once you load the save file. I think that was found by Blood Thunder, but I might be wrong. There is three people, well technically two people that worked really hard and one person who provided the, the information about clips. Um, so the two people that mostly routed it, uh, aside from me, it's Blood Thunder and uh, Black Secret. Black Secret um, is a person who was heavily involved in many games. One of those being Red Alert 2 that you, you might have seen. It was a very great run uh, at this event. So... Uh, okay, so... Destroy those, uh, create additional backup save file just in case, pull on this and then load this one. So this is a bit of a detour where we're going to be picking up a special uh, cyber rapier. Um, it also is a bit good for me because now I'll, I'll be just full on energy because of this pillar. And so I'm going to go in here, uh, drop this rapier and then go in here. This rapier has a special color that is literally the, the hard color. And if you change the, your hard color in the game, ooh, um, it's, it's going to apply the same uh, color to, to the weapon. Why is this? Oh, it didn't. Oh, that's, that's bad. That's very bad. It's good that I created this backup save. Uh, so I clicked. Uh, quick save uh, in there, but because there was an enemy, uh, the game didn't uh, actually saved. Um, so, uh, well, mistakes, right? It's like, when I was practicing it, I never had an issue with this, but I guess I'm just going to make sure that this enemy doesn't interrupt me with saving, because I need to save to clip out of here. Okay, there we go. So, clip out in here. Uh, this uh, clipping out my is a bit random at times. Sometimes it literally clips you out instantly, sometimes it does not. Um, either way. Uh, I now have to go to the master uh, release switch, which is somewhere this way. Um, I normally cannot pull on this switch unless I have re released all of the interlocks in all of the three grows. Um, but then I have to backtrack to near the entrance of uh, Beta Grove to finally eject uh, Beta Grove uh, and with that save Earth. So this is going to be very confusing now. Um, hopefully I got this. There we go. So that's nice. That worked. So now I'm going to load this save file that I created before going to Beta Grove. Uh, essentially doing uh, time travel again and then eject Beta Grove. And then time travel forward to pull on this switch again. And with this, Beta Grove is now ejected. And I can proceed to engineering deck. Uh, so, also do quick save, quick load to skip this line from showdown. Uh, I'm going to use some healing items. Um, left of elevator, there is um, a crate. That's having some more healing items. Very nice. And uh, I have to go in here. Jump, please. Um, I have to go and pick up Turbo Boots level 3. Um, these are going to be essential for doing one of the biggest skips in the game, which is skipping um, well, pretty much all of the um, quests that are needed in here 
because now there would be a lot of backtracking. Uh, you would have to backtrack to storage uh, deck, which we haven't even seen in this game. Uh, to pick up some explosives, you would have to blow up some satellite dishes, then you would have to fight the, um, Diego, you would have to find some randomly generated key codes, input them in reactor, so we're just going to skip all of that by just going in here and then going straight to uh, security deck, yes, which is level 8. Um, so, um, entrance to security deck is closed um, until you've completed all of the quests. And it is a first skip that I have found in the game and it was literally well, if I cannot skip this, then I'm just not going to run this game. Uh, but thankfully, thankfully, uh, I managed to figure out a way to skip this. It is a bit painful, but it is possible. So I'm just going to jump around here. There is a massive invisible wall. Okay, I skipped that, I think. And there we go. So that's security. Uh, and there, in the middle, there is a security tower, so-called. Um, <coughs> I have to create a backup save file in here. Uh, normally, the well, normally the original strategy for this was to use cyberspace to get inbounds, because cyberspace also has an animation that pushes you inbounds. Uh, but then someone figured out that you can just clip through uh, the floor as well. So I'm just going to be now flying up the security deck. Um, this is something that you could do in original System Shock as well, if you have picked up um, um, Turbo Boots. Um, again, this game remains very faithful to the original. Coming up is uh, Edward Diego. Normally you would fight him... Ooh, you would fight him three times. Uh, we're just going to fight him once. I'm using Berserk. I'm going to quick save. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that counted. And then we throw an EMP grenade. Okay, he stunned, and then I smack him multiple times. Pick up a key card and go to uh, the last deck, which is bridge. And this is going to be a nice cutscene with very, very nice music. If you have anything to read, it's going to be very fitting. Uh, yeah, uh, so I would like to uh, like inform you all that we have opened some rewards for the uh, upcoming uh, Pokemon run. So uh, you have options there to decide whether to release or keep the Ogre Pond and also to uh, rename the, the Medicham. So those are both available for a $50 donation each. On, oh my god! Uh, oh, one. Nice. Yes, so we have a $451 donation from Ooh. Eddie. Oh my god. Uh, and uh, they're uh, sending a message. Look at you, runner. A, re a, re sorry. a relentless creature of speed and precision, racing and optimizing as you dash through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect immortal game? Mm. Very nice. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. The original quote, if I remember, is. Uh, look at the hacker, a pathetic machine of meat and bone, panting and sweating as you run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect immortal machine? Uh, so, here I'm just going to be skipping an entire bridge. Uh, ooh, not too far, please. Uh, okay, so there is a teleporter in here. Um, Okay, nice. It loaded uh, straight away. Sometimes you just have to do additional quick save, quick load. Uh, and we're going to be fighting uh, Cyber Reaver, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, there we go. Clip from below. Um, hopefully this EMP is going to work just fine. There we go. Stunned instantly. And just smack it again. So that's two bosses. Uh, defeated in exactly the same way and now for the first time in the run we're entering cyberspace <clears throat> this cyberspace segment is very different from 
uh, original release. Originally, all of the cyberspaces uh, were just kind of descent like if you've played descent also an old game um essentially a six degrees of freedom shooter so called um for the purpose of this version of the game they decided to make it a bit more unique so we're just walking on foot uh, instead of flying around but i think the original um it's a bit better, at least as far as speedrun goes, because here it's not very clear what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, there's essentially three platforms uh, with three pressure plates, let's just say, that, you're sup that you have to stand on, which uh, releases so sort of like uh, this weird circle thing. And then you just shoot the shodan, which is right in the middle of the level until uh, she puts up shields permanently and then you stand on the pressure plate and then you proceed to the next um, um, segment and it's a very lengthy section that you cannot skip so if you have anything to read there is like now loads of time <coughs> um, yeah so we uh, have uh, uh, as I mentioned, a uh, Pokemon run coming up with some great uh, rewards there. Uh, additionally, if you donate $40 or more, you can uh, claim one of our lovely shirts. And all of this money is going to uh, make, a wish, make a Wish, which is a uh, fantastic uh, charity helping children across the world with uh, serious illnesses. So get those donations in, uh, get the reward uh, redeemed, and uh, yeah, uh, help support a great cause. So I guess uh, a, a bit of a backstory also about uh, routing this game um, because uh, there's just so much time uh, in this segment. Um, so this game released uh, right before um, ESA, uh, ESA Summer last year. It was a chase game. Um, I was working on a route very hard. Sadly, I didn't manage to figure out the route just in time, uh, which means I wasn't able to submit it for summer. But thankfully, I was able to submit it on um, for this uh, for for winter. Except, you know, I I got sick. I was supposed to be um, <coughs> streaming this on Wednesday evening, but I got sick. Thankfully, I managed to get at least healthy to the point where I can show it off on stream 2, which is not bad because, you know, stream 2 is always chill, loads of really cool people in the background always. Well, at least. <coughs> um, so yeah, uh, as far as this boss fight goes, um, it sucks. <laughs> Just plain honest, it sucks. Uh, also, it is a bit random with how AI can behave sometimes. Um, so there is an enemy in here, this one, that can just wreck you. And what's worse, once you stand on um, on a platform that is going to move you, he can still do damage to you. So hopefully I can get to the next platform before he kills me. Okay, nice. So that's the the last platform. Now, <coughs> as far as the time, um, well, as as far as the the timer goes, uh, yeah, it's not a very good time. I've made some mistakes, but um, yeah, it's also that. I've, I'm finding it really hard to try and explain this game and uh, do a nice run. There is loads of thing to, things to think about. One more. Please stop it. Uh, okay. And now I'm just going to stand in here. I might die in here, doesn't matter. I'm just going to respawn if, if I die. Time is coming up soon. Uh, when the cutscene starts playing. So... Now. <coughs> so yeah. Um, that's System Shock from 2023. Uh, 
uh, I actually really like this game. I think what Night Dive did uh, with this remake is really fantastic, and I'm I love it that they st st managed to stick so close to the original and yet make it look so uh, so nice and play re also really nice. Although it, they also made it kind of in a way uh, unapproachable for for modern audiences in a way, unless you have loads of patience and don't mind getting lost. But yeah, that that's uh, I guess well th that's my last run for for this ESA. Um, it's been a blast as always, um, and I don't know, like the I guess um, what's what remains is like well, shadows to do the entire speed farm um, who are in in the back just supporting as always. A really nice bunch of friends and and all of the people that well also watch my streams sometimes <laughs> all right um uh, off to you yeah uh thank you so much for that run uh Sui. we had uh a donation come in here just at the end so it's a 20 dollar uh, anonymous donation with no message but we still thank you so much for that one um yeah what a great run and uh we will be back uh, in a bit